Okay, okay. very good evening. Huh? Okay, I have uh, Timothy, Ivy, and Clarissa in here. Thank you. Thank you for being with me. Right now, today our session we're going to talk about mail merge, right? Mail merge, and uh, we're going to see how mail merge can help us in our everyday work. Huh? So let's look at the mail merge. Huh? Now, when we talk about mail merge, basically uh, the feature itself is for you to send email or mail to many people right, by merging the database that you have in your Microsoft Excel or Microsoft Word or some Outlook uh, CSV file that you have. Yeah, PST file as well. So you can actually connect them and merge it into your Microsoft Word document and send it out. Right. So it's it's pretty pretty uh, straightforward. However, you need two documents. It will need two documents to, to do that. So the first document that we need is actually the database. So over here, if you look at my files, huh, I have no idea why it doesn't have that logo. Uh, anyway, let's see uh, uh, if I open up this customer database, where did it go to? Oh, it go to Excel, okay. Okay, so this is my database. I simply just create a, a very uh, what's called that database which is not real. You, see, you look at all the address, it's like one, two, three, the sixth street, fifth street, twenty third street, you know what street is this? And these are all from all over the place. And these are the, the people from Malaysia. We have their email address. Right? So these are the first name, last name, and so on. So in total, in total, I have about twenty nine names. Now, why I say 29 name? Because the first row is the title. So I should not include that as a data. It's a title. Now, when you want to prepare a database for your, for your mail merge, start from row number one to avoid all the unnecessary error that are going to appear. So if you start from row number one with all your titles, you, you start with column A with all the title, then you shouldn't have uh, any error that's going to come out when you prepare your mail merge, right? So to avoid all those, just start from A1. Whatever it is, just start from A1. Don't, don't, don't have like three empty columns and uh, 10 empty rows below. Nah, don't do all that. Nah. Remove all the empty columns, empty row, and you, you start with A1. Uh, that will avoid all the unnecessary cleaning up of your, your mail merge later. So what I am going to do here is that I already show you this, some of these people. Let's read some of the name here. We have Ran, Francisco, Luciana, Martin, Michael, Swen, Jonas, Daniel, Helena, John. So these are all the names that we have. So you're going to see this name again later in your Word document. Now this is not Excel, uh, sorry, this is not Word. Uh, this is Microsoft Excel. And I'm storing my database in Microsoft Excel. So one of the easiest way to store is actually Excel. It can be a CSV file, it can be an Excel file, it doesn't matter. So long if you are going to use this for your mail merge, make sure this file is closed, not open. If it's open, uh, Microsoft Word will show you the, the, the term say that this document is being used by another application. So you need to close it. Make sure it's closed. Huh? Now I'm not going to save it, just leave it as it is. Now, the thing that I'm going to do is I have a letter, uh, a letter that I want to send to. So I got this file, which is a Word document. Okay, let me just open up this Microsoft Word. Right, so this is the letter. Now, assuming I don't want this logo, lah, I take away the logo. Now, I'm going to merge the database that I showed you just now into this letter. This letter, I'm planning to send to all the 29 customer that I have by telling them that this is our first anniversary, no, 10th anniversary on the 15th of March. Uh, and we're going to give them 10% discount for everything they buy right, in the store on that day. So this is just to inform them. Uh, this is like a letter that I want to send out. It's either an email or it can be a, a snail mail, right? You, your normal mail that you print out and then you put an envelope and you, you just mail it out. So I'm going to do the normal uh, letter first. I'm going to do a normal letter. So I'm going to do this. In my Microsoft Word, this is my document really. My document. So this is the letter that I'm going to send out. Okay. Now I'm going to start with the first step. The first step is I go to the mailing 
uh, ribbon up here, I need to decide what am I going to do. I'm actually going to start a mail merge. So I go up to the top here under this ribbon called mailing. Now avoid avoid the first two. Huh? The first two is when you are creating a single document, a single address and so on. Now you go for this one. Mail merge. Uh, you're going to start your mail merge here. You notice all these buttons are all grey out. You can't use them right now because the data is not connected to this word document yet. So the moment I start off with the step one and step two, then the rest of this will come alive. Now let's take a look a bit about uh, on this. Uh. So first thing I need to tell them is what am I going to do? I'm actually going to do a letter now. Okay, It can be an email message, but I just choose to be a letter. Lah. So when I do that, this is the letter that I have. That's why you see that it moves down a little bit. And yeah, this is the A4, A4 or, or US letter size kind of a document, right? Then I go to select recipient. Now, for those of you who are not here just now, I actually shown you a Microsoft Excel uh, file comes with 30 row, which I have 29 uh, database altogether data. One first row is actually the title. So I'm going to tell them, I'm not going to type a new list. Okay, I'm not going to choose from my Outlook contact, which I can if I want to. However, I choose not to, so I will take this use an Excel list. If my Outlook contact, right, I can actually export out my Outlook contact into a CSV file and I can use that as well if I want to modify. So I can still do that. So I'm going to use an existing list. I already have that word doc, uh, that. Let me show you this file customer database is inside the uh, mail merge folder. So I'm going to look for this. Use an existing list. So the list uh, now I need to tell them where is this particular folder. So this folder is on the uh, webinar and I go to my number 82, which is the mail merge. Uh, this is the Excel database that I show you just now. Okay, remember the name uh, run uh, we have Francisco, Luciano, Martin, Michael, Swen. Yeah, these are the people. So I'm going to click this and I'm going to hit OK. Now, by doing this, they tell me, hey, you have three worksheets. Which worksheet does you, uh, are you going to use? I'm going to use worksheet number one. Uh. The one that I have just now is in worksheet number one. Uh. So now these two documents, my Microsoft Word document and my Microsoft Excel document now is connected. So you take a look at all the item that I show you, which is gray out just now. Now, majority of them are alive. Now, they are not grayed out anymore. You can use them already. Okay. But the first thing we want to do is we want to do some checking. Eh? I want to check. So, this is my select recipient just now. The next step is to edit the recipient list. What can I do here? I can actually decide now who am I going to send to, who do I don't want to send to. You see the check mark on the second column here? Now, you can decide now. Who do you want to send to? Who you don't want to send to? If you want to go through one by one and you have 30,000 of them, then that will be very difficult. You can perform filtering. For example, if I go to the city and I say, oh, let's look at those from Kota Baru. So now I have three items from Kota Baru. I can choose where I want to send to and do that. So, but now I only have 29 names, so I'm going to go all and uh, all. You can do your filtering from here. If you don't have a specific column here to filter, you'd want to take out some of them based on your gut feeling you don't want to send to them, you can do that. Maybe you say, this Luciano Ramos uh, uh, sounds like a mafia, so don't want to send. You can uncheck them. It can be a very biased decision that you don't want to, you don't want to send to this person. So yeah, you can just uncheck. If you uncheck, then you will see Luciano Ramos is not going to be in the list. Right, so this one is I'm going to send to everyone. Uh, so I'm just going to click OK. Alright, so yeah, I think Stephanie accidentally muted. Uh. Right, so where were we? Uh, yeah, we have connect. We are connected now. So now, how are we going to insert the information from our word? Sorry, information from our Excel documents into our Word document. So you, if, if you study this in school last time, you notice that this is how you normally put up your uh, recipient address. Right? So this is the recipient address. Huh? We're going to put the name first. So I will look for this button up here called 
insert merge field and I will click the drop down arrow. I'm not going to click the button up here on top here. I just click the drop down arrow. From the drop down arrow, I can choose which information I would like to insert into here. See, my cursor is, is blinking uh, one line after the row below the title, uh, the, sorry, the date. So I click, I skip a row. I go down here, I click first name. So when I click first name, this code appear. So you can imagine now if I were to show the particular uh, document, you will see the first name. So let, let's take a look at the preview. Uh. See, Luciana, because I'm in row number three. Uh, so I go back to number one, I'll see if run. Then they see the second one, I'll see Francisco. So, all right, so this is the, 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 the code that they are using. Now, I want to show them the first name and the last name. So I put a space bar. If I don't put the space bar, the name will stick together. So I'm going to go to last name. So Luciano Ramos, if it's a Luciano Ramos. I put here, enter. Then I'll start to, con uh, to put in like address, enter. I go to the city space. I'll put the postal code and followed by the country, sorry, state. And state, then I put a space, I put a country. Uh, that's my style. Uh, the, the country can be one line below. I just press enter. Okay, put that dear. I will put the first name. Like this. So this is how I would like uh, this information to appear. Okay. Now, if I want to say, I want to thank, uh, take a moment to thank you, then I put here in bracket. Then I put their name there. So insert first name, then I close bracket. For your continued support. So I just want to show that inside here, I still have the name. I can also put in the name. Anywhere in your address here, you can also put in your name. So let's take a look at the result. Huh? If I want to see the result, all I need to do is just click preview. Preview. See? This one is the second uh, second item. Eh? So it's called Francisco. So if you go from the first one, it's Li Ran Liu. Then with the second one is Francisco Perez. So we have the Francisco inside here as well. Then we have Luciano Ramos, Luciana. Then next, Martin, Michael, Swen, Jonas. And then we have Daniel and many more. Okay, so we just keep on going. So this particular portion that you are working with now is for you to look at if there's any uh, problem with the with the data that you are loading or not. So you just have to take a look, but you don't have to see everything, right? Yeah, you just do that. So this document now is ready. It's ready for you to print. So now you don't worry about which item, uh, which record you are in. This is just for preview. The finish step here is the finish and merge. So are you going to print them or are you going to edit individual document? Uh, in, edit the individual document or you're going to print it. I'm just going to print it. Right? I'm going to click the print. Now I will decide how many, uh, not how many, but how, uh, how many records I want to print. So I want to print all or I just want to print from one to five. Okay, right? you can do that. So I'm going to print all, I'm going to click OK. Now, I'm not going to click OK anymore from this step onwards because if I do that, then it will send to a printer. Anyway, I, I take an insurance here. I say uh, print to PDF so that nothing will come up from my printer. So I just quickly set this as a default so that it will not have any problem later. Right, so I just, just want to point out to you that I can print it as a PDF. It will be one PDF. Uh, it will not be uh, 30 PDF. It will be one single PDF in one file which is not very good. Lah. Uh, it's not very good. It will not print out one by one. It will not. Okay. So those, those are the things that you can do when you want to uh, print your letter. So if you print a letter, after you print out from the printer, you will notice that you have 29 pieces of letter ready with the letter head and everything. You just fold and put it into your envelope. That's it. You can send it out. Uh, so this is the last step. I'm not going to click OK. I'm going to click Cancel. Any question from here? Oops, so many people suddenly. Hmm. Kevin, Kevin. Yeah. For, so the output of the printout is depending on the number of the record that I have, right? Yes. Okay. So, so depends if, like if, you, if, you, if you say print all, 
and you have 10,000, then you better have 10,000 pieces of paper. Oh, okay. So you can choose to print how many pieces you want. Record number one until record. See, print record what to what. Usually mm. you will not print so many. La. You will heat up your printer. Ma. So you print like 1 to 20. Then you collect the paper. You know. oh, then you so, do 21 to... So the, if you have 10,000... The mail merge uh, engine... Okay. The mail merge engine will actually pass uh, the print out parameter to the printer by yes. different record. Okay. Thanks. Yes. That, that's the code. La. This is the code that you are seeing now. So if you take away the preview, it looks like this. Okay, so that that's the preview, print preview. La, la, la. So usually you work on a preview. La, you don't look on this unless you are editing the document. Okay, so it's, that's how easy it can be. Eh? You just select this one and you can make it bold. You, know, you just make the name a little bit bold. So if you want to change the whole document to Okay, you want to change the whole document to times, not times in Roman, but a century Coptic. Just do that. And your entire document now, when you go back to mailing, it's the, the, the font has changed. Okay. So you want to make this an uh, italic. Yeah, yeah you do that. You do that. So that uh, when you print your formal letter, uh, they will be very nice. Lah. There will be 29 pieces of paper with different address on it. Okay. So for those of you who, who have been conducting trainings or you have been conducting webinars where you want to award your audience uh, with a letter of uh, maybe a, a certificate of attendance, you know, or a certificate of participation, so you have collected their names in a Microsoft Excel document, just their name and maybe their IC number if you collect them, then you can design a, a what do you call that, the uh, certificate that you want. And from there, you just make sure there is an area for you to insert the merge field. That's it. Then you print it out. So print one copy to test if everything is okay, then you can print out all of the certificate uh, very quickly with all the wordings and so on. So a lot of people use this to print out their certificates and also, uh, you call that, uh, their, if let's say it's something related to a course or a design, they will print out their, what do you call that, un, the, the result slip that they have? Uh. can't remember what. Transcript, yeah, the transcript. It, this is for you to print out transcript together with your uh, with your certificate and you email them. Uh, not email, you send by mail to them. Yeah. <laughs> so this this is how they do it. Very easy, right? Now, if you print this a letter, you print it out in 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 paper lah. You print it on paper. You have to put it into an envelope. You have to put it in an envelope. So then, how are you going to? Work on the envelope. Now, if your envelope comes with a window, you have to fold that paper so that your address can, can be seen in the envelope, right? However, if you do not know how to fold that, your, or maybe you don't have an envelope that comes to the window, it's just a flat piece of white paper or, 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 or something like that. What you do is you can print out directly onto the envelope or you print it onto the sticker paper or just the normal A4 paper will do. And what you do, you cut and you just put some uh, gum and just stick it on, uh, stick on the, on, the, on the envelope. So I'm gonna show you two things. Number one, print directly onto the uh, envelopes if you, if, you, if you have a good machine to print the envelopes. So I'm gonna do that. Huh? I'm gonna start a brand new file again, brand new file again. So I'm gonna go to mailing. This time when I start, I will not, use letter anymore, I will use an envelope. Use an envelope. So when I choose the envelope, that means this document will change to envelope. Okay, so I'm going to use the size 10. Now, if you're not sure what is size 10, you can take out your ruler and measure 4 and a, uh, 
four inches by nine inches, nine and a half inches. Okay. So this is one eighth of the uh, inch. Uh, one eighth of the inch is like half of a quarter. Four point something over nine point five inch. Right? That's the size of your envelope. Okay, so it doesn't have to be exactly the size of the envelope, but something near near to it. So there are so many sizes here. There's so many sizes that you can use. Okay, so I'm just not going to be so picky. I'm just going to use uh, size 10. Now, before I click OK, uh, right, before I click OK, uh, I can actually go to the print option here to, this, to, to actually check out my printer. How am I going to fit the envelope? Am I feeding them like this, like this, like this, like this, or middle like this? So you have to find out how are you feeding it? Are you feeding it into the printer like this, this one, or this one? It's, it's really, really very important. Huh? Otherwise, when you print, it will not be uh, correct. And another information that you need to check out is whether your printer is printing up or printing down. No, you put the envelope in. They are printing from the bottom or they are printing from the top. You, you need to know all this, you know. Otherwise, you'll be printing the opposite side of your envelope. Okay, so you might you might need to look into this uh, uh, before you actually set up your print. So you get to know your printer first before you decide on the printing. So I'm not going to really print it out. So I'm just going to don't care. Lah, oh. I don't have that don't care attitude because I'm not printing it. Now, um, I'm going to click OK. So you see this document now is no longer A4. It's actually an envelope size now. Okay. Now I can't see exactly where I'm supposed to put my recipient address unless I turn on the show height. Now, our first lesson, we talked about the show height. So now when you see all this, uh, what do you call that, the show height, the marker, then you will notice you know where you retire. So the top left-hand side is the part where you put in your return address. That means your address. So it can be a logo if you want to put the logo in. Right? So let's just say I will put in here, a Microsoft logo. Let me just go and look for stock image. Let me try and see if I can find a Microsoft logo. No, no Microsoft logo. Uh, let me try and see if I can get a logo. All right. So let's take this. It's going to be huge. All right. I'm going to make this one small. I'm going to crop this guy. I'm just going to assume that this is my logo over here and then my address, right? So I put there number one, Jalan Satu, Negeri Sembilan, right? Negara Dua. Negara Dua. So this is the address. So I can choose to put it into a dark gray color, not so outstanding, you know, uh, make it bold, something like that. So this, this is the company. This is your return address right? with all the company number or telephone number or whatever you want to call it. Lah, huh? You put it there. Then uh, this is where you're going to put in your recipient address. So as far as the recipient address, the process will start again. So I go to the mailing. You notice everything is gray out. So connect to your data. So my data is in the webinar folder. AD1. It's not AD1, sorry. Uh, AD2. And we'll merge. And this is the address. Okay. So you notice the process is the same as what we did on the letter just now. Huh? Well, I'm this let this this uh, envelope is connected to the database. So when it's connected to the database, now I can use this all this thing to do it. All right. So just now I show you how to use this. You can pick and choose how you want to arrange it. However, you can also use here address block. So when you click the address block, this is how they're going to look like. All right. So if you're not sure whether it will fit properly or not, you can do your match. So first name will match your database, right? First name, well, first name, sec, last name will be last name. 
they will have like address one will match the address. Then city will be city, uh, postal code, and then country. So something is not right here. The, the, the state is not there. Right? The state is not there. So it's not connected. Email is email, job title is job title, but you notice something is missing. Something is missing, which is the state. So I'm going to click here and then please use the state province for the state. Okay, so it was done on purpose to show it to you. You can do the matching. Sometimes you write in Bahasa Malaysia, alamat negeri. So they won't understand they would do the match. So you have to do all the match yourself. Eh? So once I hit OK, now you will see if I click OK. Eh? So the address box. If I go to the uh, preview, I will see this. This is done for me automatically. Okay, so that's the address block. If you if you want to use the address block, you can do that. Right? It, it will be very simple. And you can uh, highlight them and make it even bigger size uh, so that it will print out nicely with a, with a name. With a name as a bow. Yep. That's it. So once you are done, take away the show height paragraph marker and you go back in here and go through one by one oops only the first one got color anyway uh, normally we don't do that uh, but if they didn't they didn't change uh, because this is an address block okay so maybe i'll make everything bold and so you notice this there are some uh, limitation if i use address block because i won't be able to control each and every line they are formatting okay so now i'm done so I just click print. So I have to get ready 29 envelope into my printer. The way I actually need to load the paper in the middle. You know, then just click OK and print. That's it. Okay, so you don't have to uh, you don't have to use your pen to write addresses on the uh, envelope. You can print it out just like how you print out uh, your letter. Okay. Now, one advice uh, is that if you can, uh, don't print directly onto the envelope unless you have an envelope printing machine. They do sell envelope printing machine. Uh, I've seen one before. The reason why they call the, the envelope printing machine because envelopes are thick. Isn't it? If you go into your normal inkjet printer, most probably your roller will go Will, will go crazy with all the sound, very, very uh, noisy sound and the paper all the way. And you will notice by the time you print 29 pieces of envelope, uh, your envelope, your envelope will be crumpled. One, then the other thing is your, your paper may jam inside that particular printer. So you may not want to use that uh, unless you have a very flimsy kind of, uh, you know, those air mail, air mail kind of, uh, uh envelope uh, that kind of flimsy paper then no problem but if nowadays it's like the paper is almost like a cut size uh, very thick now it's it's better done right so what you should do instead you should print it onto the sticker paper if you have a sticker paper otherwise it will be just an a4 paper right so microsoft word will not know you, whether you are actually using a sticker paper or you're using a normal A4. They will just let you prepare whatever you want and you will print it onto the sticker if you really put a sticker paper into the printer as a paper. Lah, huh? So how do you do that? Now let's go into a new document again. Huh? This is my third meal merge already. Huh? I go to the mailing. I will not do uh, letter, email or envelope. Instead, I will use label. Label. So for the label, I usually like to print for my mail merging. Lah, I usually like to print the A, uh, what do you call that? The name cut size, the name cut size um, for my sticker. So the one that I, I usually look for is this one. Uh, every A4, A5. Every A4, A5. And I will look for the number that starts with. Uh, there are five digits. 
it up. Let me scroll down. Oops. Yeah. Yeah. The five digit. Right? So two, three, five, two, one. And this one is actually like uh, A4 paper. Uh, no, not this one. Wait. Let me see if I can. Uh, yeah. This one. Three. Three, two, zero. Yeah. Three, two, zero. Three, two, zero, three, zero. This one. Or any one of this. Lah, any one of this. They are called the business card size. Okay, imagine if they print out on the A4 paper, how many address you can print out on one single A4. You can print around 10 pieces of uh, name card onto the side. So I'm going to use this one, 32030. Lah. You see, they are just different sizes, a little bit bigger only or, or smaller. About the same anyway. So it depends on the label. So I'm just going to put 23. Uh, three two zero three zero lah. Uh. So I just click okay. Now, if you have you, if you go to the market, I'm uh, not market lah. Uh, I'm going to go to some bookshop and you bought some label lah. Uh. Behind the label, you see if it's a branded one, it comes with the name of the brand and the description plus the code. So if you know the code uh, then you look for the vendor and then you look for the number. Now, if your one is some generic one with this no brand one lah. Uh, you can actually start your own new label. You can design your own label. Every single uh, area here is defined in, in here. Is it like this top uh, side margin? Uh, side margin is this one. So how far is it from the side of your paper? Then this one is your top margin. So you have like the top margin. You have to point it to the top margin. So you tell them how far is it from the, the, the top, the side, and how, how big is your label? How tall, how wide, and the gutter width, right? So the horizontal pitch uh, is inclusive of the width. That means uh, it includes the gutter width. This is the gutter. So the horizontal pitch is usually the value is bigger than your uh, width and height. Your width and height. Right? So this, this one, you really need to take your ruler out and measure your label before you print up. Okay, so this, this is something new, and then you can give a name to it. Uh, you can need. So this one is an A4 size, uh, sorry, it's a business card size. Okay, I'm not changing anything. This is a 32031. I'm not going to use custom. I'm going to use that every year. Just now. Yeah, this one. So I look, look for it again. I just three two zero three zero. Okay, this one. I hit OK. Now this is how it looks like. Huh? Now if you are trying it uh, at your place and you say, hey, how come Kelvin your one come up with all the grid line, my one don't have. Now, you just have to make sure that you know that this is a table. This is a table. So you go to your table designer. Uh, sorry, now table layout. Uh, you must make sure you click the view grid line. If you take away the view grid line, of course, there's no grid line. You have to turn on your grid line. They are not printable, but they are there to guide you. At least you know that you are on your first cell. Uh, you're on your first cell. Okay, so everything that you do, right, you only need to design the first uh, box. The rest of the box, you can just update it. Now, let me show you what I mean. Huh? I'm planning to prepare uh, my printout in the middle. So I start by putting this in the middle like that. So this is in the middle already. So what happened now is I also want the printer, the printing of this uh, to be in the middle of the cell. So if I go to the layout, can I put them in the middle? Yeah, this one. This is the one aligned center. So it will go to the middle. Whatever address I put here, it will always be printed in the middle of that label. So the first thing I want to do now is I need to connect this particular file to my database. So again, I'm going to do the same thing. Okay, so I'm going to the uh, now I'm going to 32, 82. I'll go to this mail merge database again. Ta da! Come. Now, because it's now connected and they know that this is a label, the word next record, next record, next record will automatically appear. It's only the first box that doesn't have that, right? Now, 
this is where you're going to put in the merge, right? First name, space, last name. Okay, press enter. So then you say, oh, I want to put the uh, job title here. Then I want to put in the address. Uh, then I will put in the city space, then followed by the postal code. Enter again. Then I'll put the state, enter uh, space again. I'll put the country. Now I notice that they are too far away, so I can always con select all this. Go to the format and I say the paragraph formatting, please don't make this so big. Right? So let's make some zero and, and zero. Make it zero and zero so that they will be close. Okay, so far these two, I will do the zero zero here. Okay, zero and zero. So I want this to be in bold. I want this name here to be in bold. I want the job title to be in italic. So this is how I want it to look like. So let's take a look at it. Go to the mailing and preview. Now, hey, how come only one cell or one box here has the name. Now that's because I haven't clicked this button here says update label. So for label, I've got one more extra step, which is the update label. I click here, then the rest of them done. So all I need to do is just click this entire table, go to the uh, layout, and I put them in the middle. So everything will be in the middle. Uh, so I want my title here to the, the name. Uh, sorry. The name uh, to be bigger font size. Uh. I come here, make it bigger font size. Now you notice that the name is bigger, but how come only the first one? Now that's because we still need to go back to the mailing and click update. So the rest are bigger also. So I need to prepare three pieces of uh, label, any sticker paper that you buy. You prepare three pieces of that, put in your printer, and you let them print. Uh, so if normally a lot of them will use dot matrix paper to clean this lah. You put the paper, the put the dot paper into the dot matrix printer and then just print it up. Right. You can use laser printer also if you want to. Right. Somehow it's a little bit thicker than normal paper lah. Just be careful not to make sure that the quality of your sticker is good. Otherwise, if the sticker paper got loosed and they got stick. You know, get sticky into your your printer roller, then you are in trouble. Right. So, how do you like this? So, for those of you who organize event, uh, uh, think about it. Uh, you get people to register. Once you have their name, you have their name, their company name, their their position, which country are they from. Uh, then you just print it out, put it into a lanyard, and then you can give it to them when they arrive. Any question? Timothy, Teresa, Joanne, ah, Stephanie, any question? Noel? I'm okay. Good. So have you been using this or not? Hello? Yeah, I, I used to use the uh, I used to print this uh, label, but I use the Excel database now. Excel database to print up. Access, access. Access. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Can okay. this this can also connect to access table? I also I also use Microsoft Word a long time ago. I used to do that. <laughs> this one have better control compared to access now. Access is to start to adjust the sizes and everything. Yeah, my happened to uh, my database was in the access. <laughs> you can use this to connect one, one. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. anyway, it's, it's as long as they are able to get the work done, lah. That that's more important. Right? Yeah. Right. Now, let's just say I want. Let's just say we have we are selling tickets. We are going to have dinner. We are selling table. We are selling the table. So when we want to, or maybe we don't say table lah. We will say like voucher, voucher. We want to have the voucher printed up in running number. Like the first voucher will be one, the second voucher is two, the third voucher is three. If we want to do that, 
We can also do this in Microsoft Word. Okay, so there's another database that I have inside this folder actually. It's called the serial number. It has nothing inside there but just serial number. So let me just open up this file. It's just nothing inside there but just serial number. So I have serial number 1 to 30. Okay, 1 to 30. So if I if I want a lot, I can just continue the list. Lah. I just continue the list. Maybe until 40. Lah. Okay, so I have 40 now. I have saved. So if I want to print until 40. So if I have a uh, voucher value of uh, $10 and I want to make 40 pieces of that, which means uh, once these 40 pieces has been collected back, there should not be any more. Or sold, maybe there will not be any more. Okay, so I can have my serial number over here. Now, I don't want to put any other information. I just want a serial number. So I, I save and close this. Huh? Save and close this. So I'm going to start a brand new uh, mail merge again. Okay, this one. I'm going to start mailing. I'll use label again. Huh? I use label again. Same old thing, A4 size. Okay. Uh, sorry, the business card size. So one A4 can print 10 pieces of voucher. Uh, 10 pieces of voucher. So what I'm planning to do now is I'm going to put in some logo. Right? Some logo. So let me just uh, go back to the first one. Delete this. No. I will open up the letter again. It comes with this logo. So I'm going to copy this logo. I'll put it here. And this logo, I'm going to make it small. Yeah, I, I'm going to make this one as in front of text. I can move it anywhere I want. Okay, so this is, okay, let me just put it down here first. Now, huh? Put it down here first. So I put here, uh, uh, family day. Family day. Right? Food voucher. So I just highlight this. Now you notice I'm not doing any mail merging. Uh. I'm just basically just playing with that with the with the design. Right? So I can use uh one okay, and make this a little bit more colorful. Maybe okay, got it. Right. So now I'll put this in the middle also. Okay, so maybe what I'm gonna do is uh Put there RM uh, ten dollar. Uh, RM ten dollar. Uh, highlight this. Make it blue. Make it big. Okay, I'm gonna use Arial Black. Sorry, Arial Black. Uh, this is the ten ringgit uh, voucher. Right, ten ringgit voucher. And I'm planning to put the. Uh, I'm planning to put this serial number down here the serial number i want to put it down here next to the logo uh, next to the logo somewhere here lah. okay but i don't have uh i don't have the connection yet so i go to the mailing i look for the existing again i'll do the same thing go to the serial number so which is number one <coughs> done then I'm just going to insert the serial number here. And this is a serial number. And this serial number, I want it to be black in color. Red, la, red, la, not black, la, red. Red, red color. Okay. And I'm going to review, update. This is how they design. Okay. Just this a little bit higher. Okay. Why? Oh, okay. Because of the, the, the word, because of this word here. If I preview it, it will not look so bad. Yeah, it will look nice. So I go to this middle, this one, I tell them I want to put this in the middle. Okay. I want it to be a little bit bigger in size. Oops, too big. Okay, something like that. Okay. Then I go and do this it again. Right, so this is the design that I'm doing. Right, so this is my voucher. And this is the voucher. So what I'll do is, I'll just print. 
So I can prepare the same one, but 20 ringgit, 50 ringgit, that, that kind of, maybe five ringgit. So every voucher only have 40 pieces. Yeah. So the number is a running number. See, the running number. Here. So for those of you who, who prepared for fun fair or any any kind of a, what do you call that, a voucher that you print, you want to have that number, be, uh, follow the serial number, go ahead. Even your certificate, uh, the certificate come with the serial number. Yes, you can do this as well. So in your database of your recipient, the serial number is a running number. So any new one that comes in, the number just continue. Okay. And then you can print out the serial number on your certificate. So that will become authenticated by the serial number. So anybody try to duplicate it, they will have the different number. So this take note, uh, you can you can refer back to the number when you when you uh, check it with the go, go with the database. Yeah. Are we good with this? <laughs> the not necessary is only for letter, email, uh, or envelope. It can be for any kind of uh, documentation that you have, right? So now. Once I'm done, I can turn away the view grid line, then it will look like this. But usually I would like to have the grid line. Uh, and I would also want my table, uh, the table here, this entire table to have a border. Usually uh, the border, I will choose a very light color for my border. A very light color, then I will just choose this one. All border. Now, why am I doing this? Because if I were to cut it, at least I will cut it with a straight line. If without the border, I'm going to be in trouble. I do not know, you know the top part here, the bottom, you know, whether they will be aligned when I print it. So you know, what I mean is when I cut it, it will not be the same size. I want to make sure that they are printed. And when I cut, I have the light gray color line there that I can see so that I can cut it accurately, so to speak. Right. So you guess you, I, I usually do that. Okay. So this this can be something helpful for for you when you want to do the printing out. Right. Again. Okay. Any question? Ivy. Any question? Timothy. Joanne. So far, okay. <laughs> so okay. Okay lah. Huh? So until you give it a try, right, you will not know uh, what kind of issue that you're going to find. Uh. You must give it a try. Otherwise, uh, by listening like that, because I know where to click, uh, I know where to go. But when you are doing it yourself, then you can you tend to forget what you need to click, what you need to bring in. Kind of thing. That, that will happen. Right? So let me show you a website. Uh. A second. Uh. They call it uh, Microsoft Word uh, Mail Merge Peru Books. So much few quotes. Which one? I think. I think this is the one. Okay, they tend to have the few quotes. No, not this one. Right. So you need to you need to do a little bit of research on this, huh? Especially when your database that you have in Microsoft Excel, you formatted the number so nice. Uh, when, when it go into the mail merge, it will just turn out to be without the formatting. So if you want to format the, the item, you need to go into the uh, Google to look for how they actually change the code. These are the number codes. These are the number codes that you need to add. 
Okay, so you need to put like hash, dollar, hash, those kind of things. Uh, this one is just a normal sales amount. This one is with the dot zero zero, you know. Yeah, this, these are some of the few codes that you want. Then they also have for dates. Huh? So you have to find out how to write. I don't reckon you to remember. Lah. No need to remember. Lah. There's no reason for you to remember. Because this, this data is uh, available online. Lah. You just do a Google search immediately, you can find it. So how do you go into it? You can right click, you can look at the field. Okay. Let's just say this one. Right. This one. So if I go in here, I can right click this, I can switch toggle between the field codes. Uh, this is the field codes. So if you have any any additional formatting, you're gonna put it with a backslash, then followed by the codes. Uh, same goes with the date. Sometimes when you want to print the date, eh, how come the date becomes just five five digit number? You have to put in the particular slash D M M M Y Y Y Y like what you learn in Excel. Uh, those codes you had to put in there in order to appear as uh, the date that you wanted. Otherwise, they will just give you number. Right, so. Microsoft Word don't come with formatting. Your Microsoft Excel has the formatting, but when you transfer them over to Microsoft Word, the formatting don't follow. So you will need to have an additional step to look for the codes uh, and apply them. Uh, the number codes, you see? They, they put the, ha the, the backslash hash, then followed by the number code. So the number code can come with an uh, open apostrophe here or without. Okay, so you can just do some read up on that. Huh? So normally then they will use this kind of number. Right? So if you want to put in all those RM lines so on, then you have to put a code. Okay. Yeah. These are all the dollar. Huh? These are all the dollar. So you have to do some experiment on that. Okay, so this this is a little bit of a thing that you may want to consider looking for if you are using the mailman. This is the normal problem that a lot of people are facing when they use mailman. All right, so yes, that's it from me. Do you have any question? Oh my God, I didn't turn on my camera again this time. <laughs> I'm finished already, then I remember I don't have camera. Okay, this time we're quite straightforward. It's okay. We know how you look like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we I've been gesturing in front of the camera. I didn't even know my camera is on. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Here I am. Okay, so I guess that's it. Unless you have questions, you can you can ask la, no problem. Thanks, Kelvin. Very no useful uh, session. Right. So, uh, thank you everyone yeah, for joining us. Uh, as usual, uh, there's a feedback form in the chat window. Feel free to share your feedback to Kelvin. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yes, it's, it's, it's good. Like good to to yeah. to to get the systematic flow of things. Uh, I used to do it, but I come from the school of hard knock. Hard knock, hard knock. Well, everybody go through that station. Until somebody discover you are doing it that way, then they will let you know how is the better way to do it. Understand. So, okay. Eh? All right. Thank you. I see you again. Bye, uh, bye see everyone. Next week. Good night. Okay, bye bye. bye. Thanks. Good night. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Bye. Yeah, wait, you notice yeah. my beard. Huh? <laughs> yeah, it's growing longer. Eh? <laughs> Take care. It's very hard to keep it long. <laughs> bye.